Two days in a row, we're starting it with what what It's Tuesday, July 9th. Uh, throwing it back 80 style there. You got a good five-day win streak on the queues. I mean, you know, the market is completely, completely in a bull market. You can't argue. Look at how far the queues are above that nine day. So, you know, hey. You, your boy told you we were in a bull market. You're in a bull market until we're not. And I'll go over some things today. We'll go over Zap, which is crazy. We'll go over an Alpha Pick sell, um, which came out. I'll, I'll go over the exact stock, how much they made, blah, blah, blah. Highs from yesterday, biggest movers. We'll go over um, how my five-minute algo has made you a tremendous much, uh, amount of money in Zap. We'll go over Corning, we'll go over SMCI, NVIDIA, Amazon, a play for Amazon, Apple, uh, Abercrombie or NVIDIA, which one would you want? Roblox filled the gap at uh, 40, Bank of America, and then some educational stuff. I want to start out with a thank you to every listener. I got an email from Apple yesterday. I guess I'm now the 228th. This includes things like CNBC, Motley Fool, and Seeking Alpha. I'm more popular, I think, than Seeking Alpha is. I'm number 228 in Apple. Now, mind you, that's just Apple. Only 20% of my listeners are on Apple. So 80% of them are on uh, Spotify. So Spotify said I'm top 50. So I'm doing something right. But that's because you listen. And I thank you for listening. I, I really, really do appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you for showing up everything for me. Now, we're going to go over this. Now, Alpha Picks is a portfolio that I am an affiliate of. And, and you can sign up for it. here at Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Deli Stock Pick. It's the third link. And if you want to beat the S&P, I think this is one of the best portfolios you can get. Uh, it's 122% versus the S&P at 35%. Okay? It's data-driven names. What they do is on the 1st and the 15th of each month, you sign up and you get a pick on the 1st and the 15th. The key point is they tell you when to sell. And that's what I want to go over right now is they tell you when to sell. And it is uh, the symbol. Uh, They just sent this out a couple of days ago. BXC. Blue Links Holdings. They gave a button. I will post in the newsletter. And again, the newsletter is free. I don't think they'll mind me saying this. But BXC is a sell and they gave five reasons. And they give you reasons why to buy and sell. And, and, And the reason I am a big fan of this is they have a, a, a proven record in their portfolio. There have been seven stocks that they've either, tri- either trimmed or completely exited this year, including they trimmed SMCI for a 968% gain. They trimmed it. They did not get rid of it. It became too large in the portfolio, so they said, you know what? We want to trim it. They timed it perfectly. They exited five, and five of the seven all had positive gains. This is one of them. This was up 20%. This was up 20% since they bought it. You can see, and I'll post this chart. It, you can do the, the, the calculation yourself. They, they bought it in, in, in July of 2022. They sold it here in July of 2024, 20%. Are they selling at a bad time? Probably. I would look at that chart. Remember, this is a fundamental portfolio. It is not based on charts. They use charts a little bit to try and uh, gain it against other stocks, but that's when they pick it. When they sell it, it has lost some of its fundamental story, and that's the difference between a lot of the people that look at charts and fundamentals. This is 100% a fundamental story on these alpha picks, so you can subscribe to this. My link save you, saves you 50 bucks. The other thing you can do is go to Linktree. And there's a a savvy trader. Follow my trades. It gets you to the free daily stock pick core portfolio. This is 35 names, 100 shares of each. I would never tell you to manage a portfolio like this. But somebody said, hey, I was trading small cap stocks and I lost myself. And we'll get to some of that stuff. Uh, It was in the private Facebook group. These are 35 names that I think you can safely trade and not lose your shirt on. 
It may not be 30% in a day. It may not be 50% in a day like some of these movers like Zap, but it, it most likely will make you money. How good is this portfolio? Over year to date, it's up 36% versus the NASDAQ at 21%. We've almost doubled. And it's just a I, I sold 900 shares of NVIDIA. When it split 10 for 1, I sold 900 shares. Would I ever do that in a, a real portfolio? Hell no. It's still in a bullish trend. So I would never sell it, but I did. I did. I sold 900. So it just keeps it at 100 shares. I wouldn't manage the portfolio. But there are tons and tons of examples. Uh, I want to go over a note from Goldman Sachs yesterday specifically for this. The note said the S&P returned 15% in the first half of the year. If you take out NVIDIA, that drops to 10%. If you strip out the entire Magnificent 7, that drops to 6%. Viewed one way, that's a very top-heavy market. Viewed another way, plus 6% in the market in six months is a perfectly acceptable return. In fact, it annualizes to the average long-term of the S&P. So we're having an average year outside of those top seven. Yes, I have those top seven in this portfolio. But I also have something like Lilly, which is up uh, 69%. I also have something like SMCI, which is up 188%. I also have something like Costco, which is 69% up. I also have something like Goldman Sachs, which is 40% up. I also have something like Palo Alto Networks, which is up 40%. So you can see there are tons of other names. It's 35 names. It's not just the Magnificent Seven. But you can take your pick. You can sign up for Alpha Picks through the link tree. And, and you can enjoy the $50 off. I love Alpha Picks. And the reason I like it is if you don't want to do the research, you don't have to. It's hand fed to you. And so I think if that's the case and you want that, I think it's a great, great tool for you. And again, my, my link saves you 50 bucks. Uh, and, and again, BXC, I'll post it in the free newsletter uh, about exactly why they sold it. So uh, with that t- thing, I want to look at, here's 52-week highs at some point yesterday. This is huge. This is huge. I mean, these are the highs from yesterday. I will tell you, uh, long-term And we went over macro yesterday on Spaces. I will be on Spaces tomorrow at 2 p.m. with Wolf. So follow me on Twitter if you want to join that. You want me to listen. Brandon said everybody sounded boring as F. So, uh, yeah, boring as F. It it is what it is. But, you know, hey, I I don't sound boring. I'll I'll be the same kind of person. Long term, there might be a slowing economy. We've talked about how the, the, the consumer is a little bit stretched. If you're feeling stressed, you're probably not alone. And again, if the consumer is stretched and not spending as much, that's going to slow the economy. I think that heading into earnings, again, bank earnings are Friday. We have Pepsi on Thursday. There are a couple of companies out there next week that we can look at uh, at a later date, but I don't, I don't want to jump ahead. But again, if any company that has run up, and this is the danger in your portfolio, if you have a company that is reporting and they report even a slight miss, or they guide slightly lower, I think it's going to get killed. Just simple as that. You know, take a look at these these stocks. We can look at a couple. I'm going to look at a couple as we go. Uh, these are the biggest movers of today. <clears throat> biggest movers, Camara Therapeutics, Surge 10%. Intel is up. Has Intel found a bottom? I don't think Intel is a good investment. And, and I trimmed half my Intel at 31. Am I happy about it? pretty you know pretty solid i put the money into into nvidia so i trimmed half that position i still am in and am gaining in that i bought a 40 do i think it's getting back to 40 i don't know there's a whole bunch of gaps up here a whole bunch of gaps to fill you've got the 50 day starting to move positive but if i go over here and i go to intel and this is seeking alpha and this is seeking alpha premium you can sign up for it again through the link tree but this is how you look at this. You know, say you know nothing about valuation, you know nothing about growth, you know nothing about profitability. All of those grades are in Seeking Alpha Premium. So you take a look at this and you say, well, does the valuation make sense? No. The PE, crazy high. I mean, they're not, you know, you, you look at that PE, it's crazy. You look at the peg ratio and yeah, they might have opportunities. But that's based on their forecast. They have missed forecasts several times. You go to the revisions 
and it's one up, 35 down. Three up, 38 down. Now, mind you, uh, fortune favors the brave. So again, you can look at that. Their profitability is an A+. But when you look at this growth, they are losing 2%. They're declining 2% year over year. And again, if you think that NVIDIA and Intel are equal just because they make chips, hell no. NVIDIA is so, or Intel is so far behind NVIDIA. NVIDIA has a huge, huge moat. I wouldn't be upset getting out of uh, Intel right now, even though it's a big mover. I still think your money is better spent in NVIDIA because you can look at the valuation of NVIDIA. We'll look at that one in a little bit. Um, Zap. This is an interesting one. So Zap is uh, one that's up like 143%, whatever, uh, but it went nuts. Ross here from Warrior Trading. This is a video, and I'll post the link in the newsletter. Uh, Watch the video. He shows you how he identified this pre-trade. This was Sunday night he was sitting there, and he said, hey, this one looks like it's got short interest. It's trading above the VWAP. We've got some support. Yesterday, he even found that it was still trading above the VWAP. It had some support. This is how you trade stocks on momentum. Ross is not a fundamental. This is not a stock that you go and you buy and you just say, oh my God, it's going to go up. It's going up. No, he shows you. I didn't want to trade cost, K-O-S-S, which was another huge one. He shows you why he didn't want to trade. He shows you why he got into Zap. He shows you how he makes money. But he's a he's not a fundamental trader. He, he's got a separate investment account that he actually trades on fundamentals. But this one, he purely trades on momentum. So I thought it was interesting. I thought it was great. If we go over and we look at Zap, and and again, if you have a plan on this one, you can make money. If you don't have a plan and you're just nilly-willy looking at this, I think you're going to lose your shirt. This is a short squeeze. This is a classic short squeeze, 30% short interest, and it's going up. So again, it's going up. There's going to be a reverse split or something. I don't exactly know what's happening. But here, what I want to show you is if you have a plan, you can make money. Because what happened, if you look at this one, uh, and we're going to go back. Do, do, do. Let's look at, we'll test. Uh, we'll test a thousand candles. How many does that get us back to? Um, let's see. Yeah gets us back to you know back way back when Uh, i don't like the exit in this one but i think the entry on this five minute setup is absolutely stellar and so when you look at this entry you can see right here at 363 on july 5th perfect now the exit got you out with 21 percent, but you left a lot on the table again i would trade this one looking at candles I would be looking at confirmation and loss of confirmation. I wouldn't necessarily trust the algorithm to get you out. It's on a five-minute can- five candle. If you're trusting a five-minute candle with a bot, I think you got something wrong with you, especially on something like this because you're going to lose it. Right now, you're looking. We lost it. But the algorithm got you out with a 96%. Confirmation got you out with a 96%. I would not have taken another trade in this. Right now, you're not seeing any confirmation. There's nothing, nothing that tells me, you know, you could have bought here at 12 and ridden it up to uh, 15, 14. Yeah. And then gotten out because you don't have confirmation. Your MACD is crossing down. Your RSI is going down. Are we going to see a pop on this one? Probably at opening. We're at 915 right now. So you got about 15 minutes on this one. You might see an opening. I would not get into this without a plan, without some type of emotion taken out of this. I do like this A plus setup. I think it's absolutely fantastic, but understand you have to trade with a plan. You have to trade with a plan. That's what Ross kind of puts in place is you've got to trade with a plan. Now, let's talk, and I'll put that five-minute setup in my uh, in, in the newsletter so you can see the chart. If you want the five-minute setup, if you want the four-hour algorithm, if you want anything, go to the link tree. And you simply click on that top link. It will take you to TrendSpider. TrendSpider, 50 bucks a month. Again, 96% run on Zap in that five-minute algorithm. That You know, you put in, uh, what, $200 into Zap? You paid for TrendSpider for the month. That's it. You know, a- again, you put $1,000 into Zap. You paid for TrendSpider for the year. You get six months for free with my link. The most popular one here in hand, it's 100 bucks. Take a look at the, the, the access that you get and just take a look and see what you want. 
you know, again, there's a lot of tools in TrendSpider that you can use. Now let's talk about Corning. Corning pops as it lifts Q2 sales. I was watching Josh Brown yesterday on, on midday and he was on the phone and it was a pick that he picked in May. And he thinks it's going back to its 2021 highs. We'll look at the chart. It was a clear pick. He basically said in May, and I remember, uh, I, and I think I may have included this, but I may not have. I was not 100% in on his thought process here. I was 100% that it made sense, but I said, yeah, you know what? I'm not going to take the trade. Um, and essentially what he did was he uh, he said, they're going to be build data centers. What are they going to need? They're going to need fiber. They're going to need glass. And he said in May, you should buy this one. And it was up here. And, and you know, around the beginning of May, it was around 33. I didn't believe him. But let's take a look at the weekly because he says it's going to get to these 2021 highs. That's $46. You still have money left in this one, $46. It's going to trade up there. Is the valuation worth it? We can go to Seeking Alpha and we can take a look. In the quant, it is a strong buy. The valuation, a little bit stretched. But remember, if they report earnings and they report the 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 uh, the craziness that that's currently going on, then you're going to see this one pop. And and, and the so far the peg is 1.59. Uh, the revisions B plus. Momentum A minus. Their growth C minus. But they just came out and they said they upped their guidance. Revenue growth year over year down nine percent. This could be the start of what they turn around and they get back to their highs. Now, when's their earnings? Let's take a look. Their earnings are coming out July 29th. So between now and then, I think you hit this high up here at 46. It's a stock. They just crossed the 200-day. Usually the 200-day, you can see it. It hovered right around this 200-day. It blew right past it. Your 50-day on the weekly is positive. Are you a little bit stretched? Absolutely. Do you have some support here? Probably at about 40. You know, you can see it popping right here. It's hitting this top. Do we have a double top here? I think you're going higher. Honestly, I just think you're going higher on this one. If it's an AI story, what you're going to see, and Josh pointed this out, he said, you know what? Uh, you're going to see a bunch of ETFs and a bunch of strategies start to say that Corning is part of an AI play, and this is just going to go. He doesn't think it's going to be a super micro like that was last year, but he does think it's going to be a good play on this one, and it's got more room to go. So Corning, we can look at the, the Wall Street uh, analyst, and they probably have upped their price target. It's $40. They probably upped their price target. We can go you know, to Fin. If you want, go to FinViz and look, see if anybody upped their price target. Super micro. Could still generate long term, uh, long term gains. Supermicro is a buy. I mean, you know, th this one. We'll go and look at the stock chart, but it's a strong buy in the quant. Profitability is a D, and the margins are coming into question. But that article that I just showed you has argued that they still have room to grow. Are they going to grow a hundred percent again? Is this one going to sit as what seventeen hundred dollars? Probably not. Is it going to twelve hundred dollars? Probably. When you look at Wall Street. The average price target is 1032 That's a 14% upside from where you're trading today. We can go and take a look at the chart. SMCI right here, it's at 908 It's up 1%. This one is trading sideways. I've said it on the weekly there. You saw it just a snapshot, but it's trading sideways on the weekly. You got an entry here at $918. The algorithm got you out with a 6.54% gain. It gets you back in for $918. Now, say, say you say, well, Gary, if you bought this two years ago, you made 2,170%. Your algorithm only makes you 751%. My algorithm makes you 751%. Glass half full, glass half empty. You know, if you want some safety and you want to sleep at night, 751%. Don't argue with me. That's a good freaking algorithm. Yes, it makes you 2,000%. I can sleep at night holding this name. If you can't sleep at night holding a name like this that is going to lose you 40% in a potential downturn, then don't you know get my algorithm because it will get you out at the appropriate time. It doesn't guarantee that you're going to make money, but back tested. This one over 24 months, 25 positions. So once a month, your average win 36%. You can see this one, 182% gain. It got you in. When it pulled back, did it get you out? No. When it pulled back, did it get you out here? No, because it knew that you had more room to go higher. That's just it. 
So super, super micro, you can take a look at that one. Now, Stephanie Link on her la- her last call, her final trade yesterday, I just wanted to bring this up. She brought up Elan. Elan Alonco Animal Health. This was a, a, a veterinarian who listens to me, asked about this one in the, the social request. And I said, hey, it's got some weakness in it, but see what you can, you know, see, see how it's going to pull back. It pulled back to the gap. Now, is it going to fill this gap? It's already filled. You got a gap up here, though, between 16 and 18. So Elan is one that you may want to look at. Again, if you're a veterinarian and Elan Elan is providing you a bunch of stuff, this may be a buy. You know, the Wall Street, the valuation is is a, a, a C. You know, you can take a look at it. The peg ratio is not too high. So it's growing pretty well. When you look at Wall Street, their average price target is $19. It's 38%. Stephanie Link said it's just, uh, her words were, it's my final trade because it's undervalued. Stephanie Link is a value trader. That's interesting for me to see uh, and to hear. NVIDIA, Micron, others in focus uh, as the chips still have catalysts. NVIDIA is up 1.6% in the, pre, uh, in the pre-market. Uh, Micron is up 07 Micron was down yesterday when all the other chips were up. I've said that Micron has some stuff. AMD, I own AMD. I think you're going back to 190 on that one. That one was up 3% yesterday. Taiwan Semi is the one that, you know, hey, if you want to just buy the the person that's making the chips, you can buy that one. Intel was up 6% yesterday. That's the one that I think you're just tra- chasing dead money. Uh, but again, the chips have some uh, room to run. Uh, Amazon, uh, we can look at this one. Za. Za from uh, what that, that Superman Za, <laughs> I think that was the leader of Superman uh, Superman's world. Um, after reading the specifics of Be- Bezos' sale plan, it looks like he isn't selling any shares under 200. Basically, every tick over 200 will need to see buyers to match Bezos selling until he's done. Once that lid comes off, the move will be explosive again. 250. If if what you're seeing right now. It's at 199.69. And you're seeing this. You're going to see it go sideways. And you're going to see Jeff Bezos sell. And if we go over here to um to uh to Finviz and we look, you're going to see a whole bunch of uh, Jeff Bezos sales. And he's selling at 200. Now he was selling at uh let's see, he sold at 208 and then at 200 on July 3rd. He's probably going to continue to sell. And that those forms came out on the 5th. So you haven't seen the 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th. You ha- still haven't seen this. Again, today is July 9th. Amazon has been stuck at 200. So your trading range is under 200. If you want to get into Amazon, there is no reason not to sit, to buy under 200. Now, Amazon uh, on the, the, the quant, if we go and look at this one, I would argue it is one of the, the, the Magnificent Seven that has not, the average price target is 219 on Wall Street. That's a 10% upgrade. The quant says a hold. And the only thing that's not an A is the valuation. And, and I would argue they will kill it. Again, Prime Day is coming up next uh, next week. I think Amazon is is in the driver's seat for a lot of this AI stuff. When you use Meta's um, uh, AI, you're using Amazon Cloud. I think this one is going to be a winner. And I agree with Za. Anything under 200, load up. Uh, a- Apple, AMD, and Intel could start catching up with AI winners in H2. I agree with Apple and AMD. Uh, AMD is a little bit more expensive. I'd still rather go into uh, into uh, Nvidia, but Intel. I just I, I've lost on Intel. I lost you know faith in them. I'd rather see you wait on Intel until 35. It's trading right now at 34.98. I guess. I mean, it makes sense if you want to trade the the bounce on that one, but they still have a a catalyst here. Um, This article about Apple in spotlight is Piper Sandler ups the price target. Ooh, he upped the price target to 200. He went from 190 to 225. Douchebag, it's trading at 228. Douchebag, it's trading at 228. And he just ups his price target today from 190 to, to, to 225. Douchebag analysts. Again, I'm not arguing that Apple deserves this price. I think it's crazy. I think it's hype. Uh, the valuation is an F. The growth is a D. Apple has to show that this valuation makes sense. They are buying back a ton of stock. Their stock act absolutely gets diluted in the right direction. 
you as a shareholder, as you hold this, actually make more money when they buy back the shares. Their growth, though, again, look at the revenues, down 0.9%. When that starts going positive, it's $250 stock. As simple as that. And, and I've said it before, I, I'm not adding to Apple at this price. In fact, when it starts to show weakness, I'm trimming it. I'm not selling out of this one. This is one that I will always have. It's what, 50, 60% of my portfolio? I haven't even looked lately. But it's a, a huge amount of my portfolio. You have confirmation. You're above that nine day. The 50 days moving positive. You had this golden cross. You know, say you just traded the golden cross. The golden cross happened at 189. You could have made like 40 bucks in, in, in gain right there. If you just traded the golden cross on this one. So, you know, it's a bit extended. Do I think it could go higher? Absolutely. I think it's $250 stock. Am I trading it? No. Now, I saw this uh, this uh, YouTube video yesterday. Uh, why Abercrombie stock exploded faster than NVIDIA's. This is a 101 on fundamentals. 101. If you can find a company that's trading and doing things like Abercrombie did over the last year, this is what you want to find. Why? And watch the video. Again, the video is going to be in, in the newsletter, so you can watch the link. But why do you want to find a fundamental like that? Because look, over one year, uh, ANF, which is an alpha pick, by the way, and they've had it for quite a while. They've had it for this one year. ANF up 405% in one year. NVIDIA only up 200%. And I say only. It's up 204%. But again, if you can find a company that is uh, doing things right and doing things correctly like ANF and it was clear as day with Alpha Picks, I went back and read their Abercrombie, uh, Abercrombie uh, uh, their, their synopsis when they picked it. It was 100%. They're doing everything right. And then the street found out and boom, you're seeing it up 405%. So again, you want to take a look at that. Now, Bank of America got an upgrade. This is in the core portfolio as well. I think $40 is your absolute uh, support. At this point, it's $40.88. But we, I think we've put enough uh, straight line in there that I think $40 bucks is your support level. Now, where are we going? Look at the weekly. This is up at $50. Bucks. You're about to get a golden cross on the weekly. Old support turns to new resistance, and old resistance turns to new support. So you can see, I put it down there. I said you should be buying under 30. I was buying under 30. This was October of last year. It's not a, a huge, you know, this isn't a major portion of my portfolio, but I believed in banks. And when I said they were under book value, I was adding to it. What's a name that's under book value that reports this week? Citigroup. You know, their expectations are a little high. Probably not my, my favorite name to actually play, but for long-term buy and hold, I think you're fine with Citigroup. They're turning things around. $66, $64 is where you're trading. It's a $99 book value. So Bank of America, it's an upgrade. They up the price target. Uh, he expects uh, Q2 to fall, blah, blah, blah. Uh, overweight and JP Morgan, they up the price target to 42. That's a nice 5% from where you're at now. I mean, again, that's, it's not super exciting when you have 40% gains or, you know, even something like, uh, you know, Roblox, we can talk about Roblox. This is in the core portfolio. And I went over this a little bit. Roblox is in the core portfolio because it constantly trades to $40. And where did we have a gap? We had a gap to $40, 38.95. That reaction was an overreaction. Algorithm got you in at $32. Did you take the trade? I'm not a, a player of Roblox. It's not in my, uh, you know, my wheelhouse, but I did the analysis and I said, you're in this trading range. Where are we going again? We're probably going up to 46. I mean, that trading range is super, super, it's, it's there. The trading range is there. We dip down to the bottom here of $30 and, and you got up here. When the four hour algorithm said to get in, it was clear we were going to fill that gap. Did we have a bumpy way there? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, uh, my algorithm is based on MACD. So as part of the education section, this is a MACD trading strategy of a market wizard. If you wanted to set this up as a strategy in TrendSpider and trade this wizard, again, she's an absolute wizard. You can do it. Watch this video. It's 18 minutes. They outline the entire strategy. 
They outline the entire strategy for you. You can build it in, in TrendSpider and you can trade on it. That's what's great about TrendSpider. You don't have to use my four hour algorithm. I think it, it, you know, it back tests very well. But again, this is part of the education center. I try and provide in the newsletter, uh, I try and provide everything from the charts, my thoughts on the market. I give you uh, special offers. I include the links of, of everything. I tell you when I'm on spaces, when I might be making appearances. I give you Seeking Alpha. I give you all the notes from my podcast that I do on this. You will get it every day for free. And then I include a little in, uh, education section. So if you don't want any that, you know, you say you don't trust me. I don't know why you're signing up for the newsletter, but say you don't trust me. Go and, and just sign up for the newsletter and use the education center. Now we're going to get to social requests. Anything that you send me, I am 100% replying to everybody. It might be delayed if you get caught up in spam or something happens like Spotify doesn't have it. But if you get the newsletter, you can just reply to that email and I get the email. That's how I got a bunch of social requests from yesterday. So let's take a look at some of the social requests. Uh, let's see. Social requests. Interested in what you think. Uh, this is Joe on email. Interested in what you think about GEX levels. I've been following geeks of finance and they seem pretty good at predicting stock movement. Though I will never buy Seeking Alpha. I'm a big fan of Trendspider. Seems legit. I don't know. Joe, Trend uh, Seeking Alpha is awesome. Seeing how I, I told him I was gonna uh, gonna light him up for this. I don't know what GEX levels are. Uh, I don't think that's a stock. Let's just Google what GEX levels are. Um, GEX levels. Uh, GEX levels. Gamma exposure. I know nothing about it. I mean, do your research. I know nothing about it, Joe. I don't trade with this. I outline to you guys every day on this podcast how I trade. There is nothing hidden. There is no, no tool that I use that, that, I, that I hide. I use uh, uh, TrendSpider. I use Seeking Alpha. I use Alpha Picks to try and find picks. I also listen to Twitter. But there's nothing Alpha, you know, there's nothing that Gamma stuff. I mean, again, if you find something that works for you, use it. I'm not saying you have to use my system uh, of, you know, the four hour algorithm of trading the, uh, the daily stock pick core portfolio, which is a proven portfolio. I'm not saying you have to do any of that. I'm not even saying that you have to sign up for seeking alpha. If you like Finviz, I'm planning on doing a, a, a video between the difference when I, uh, went from using Finviz and I used Finviz for years successfully seeking alpha paying for the premium took me to a new level to, of understanding the fundamentals. That gamma stuff that you're talking about, that's most likely momentum. And it's most likely price action. I don't do that. I include Ross's videos as a momentum trader because some people are, are interested in that. Do I do that? No. Do I know how to do it? Absolutely, I know how to do it. But as I, you'll find, and Joe, I don't know how old you are, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, exactly uh, where you're at in your investment career or, or trading career, but I, I do know as I get older and the other traders that I know as you get older, risk becomes more nerve wracking. And so trading, I can't trade on a one minute chart these days. Could I trade on a five minute chart? Yeah. Do I feel comfortable doing it? No. I'd rather do a swing trade where I'm on a four hour candle and I can go enjoy, enjoy my life. So when you're talking about Gex and, and, and geeks of finance, if they're good at predicting, everybody is a genius in a bull market. Where are we? And that's what you have to ask yourself. Everybody's a genius in a bull market. Let's take a look at the weekly chart of QQQ. Everybody's a genius in a bull market. I will say it again. I am a genius in a bull market. Following people and not understanding exactly what you're doing, that's the the the, the destruction of, of portfolios. So I, I heard it, I was on Spaces yesterday and this douchebag said, uh, NNE, uh, this is the nu nano nuclear. And uh, he said, this, this is a great stock. I mean, honest to God, it's been a killer trading stock. Do I trust it that, that I'm going to buy? No. And the reason is the fundamentals. The fundamentals of this douchebag saying, my price target's 46. What tells you the freaking price target is 46? And he said it's a banger guaranteed to make you money. People lobbed on to him. And I, I commend the Spaces community for saying, you're not a financial advisor. You can't t tell people. There's a lot of people that follow your trades. 
A lot of people follow my trades. A lot of things, you know, I haven't done right. But I will tell you, the majority of what I do makes me money. Find your own system. So I don't mean to, you know, get into this, but Gex levels, I, I don't know anything about it. I'm not going to research it because it's not my thing. Uh, Charles from Facebook. Hey, Gary, this is a meme stock I got into when I was learning and trying different things. Right now, I don't mess with meme stocks at all because I've lost $1,000 in memes for my size portfolio. That's a lot of money. What do you recommend I do for stuff like this? Do I keep and hope it pops one day or do I just sell? 60 bucks is nothing. Uh, that's why I'm st still holding it. It looks like a good company on paper. Do I just add to it, get my average down? Uh, it may fall even further, I feel. This is GWAV. GWAV. Um, GWAV is Green Wave Technology, Green Wave Technology Solutions. We can look at it. Um, so, I mean, honest to God, GWAV, let's see. I don't know what you're seeing on paper that says it's a great one. Um, is it covered by the quant? It's not covered by the quant. Um, we can go and look at the financials, um, you know, earnings, dividend, growth. Uh, they're making 6% more year over year. It's not great. Profitability. Um, gross margin profit, 30%. I honest to God, I mean, if it's 60 bucks, that, that reverse one for 150, that means they don't have enough money. I mean, let's, let's look in Finviz here. Um, so that, you know, everybody can see it, uh, index, they don't have a P so they're not making money. They're losing $36 million, uh, shares outstanding 12 million. They have, uh, cash on hand, six cents. They're going to dilute you again, Charles. If you want to keep your 60 bucks, sell it. Put the 60 bucks into something like Bitcoin. I mean, that's the thing. So you have a stock like this and you've lost a bunch. The psychology is, oh my God, I need the dollar, co dollar cost average. There is no way this stock is coming back when they're losing $36 million and they only have cash on hand of six cents per share. And that is less than 36. They're going to dilute you again. They're going to basically do a revert. As long as they're above a dollar, they can stay listed. That's the key. When they get under a dollar, they're going to get delisted. Now they need cash, so they're just going to do it. Now, now we can. no insiders are selling. Uh, the market cap, again, it's 19 million bucks. There's Waffle House locations that make more revenue than that. So Charles, I, I I don't know, Charlie, I don't know if that's something that you want to hang on to, but in my mind, I'd just probably take the 60 bucks and throw it into Bitcoin, throw it into iBit. I don't care what you buy iBit at, it is probably guaranteed to go up higher than G-Wave over the next 10 years. Simple as that. If you don't mind losing the 60 bucks, that 60 bucks could turn into $6,000 within you know two years on Bitcoin. It could. I mean, you know, if Bitcoin does something crazy. You know, if, if, if the dollar is no longer the, the standard, uh, you know, world currency, Bitcoin all of a sudden craps up. I mean, Bitcoin could become huge. So I would say get out of it. But, you know, again, your point, if you believe in it, I don't know what you believe in. But again, Damon from Instagram. Hey, Gary, back at it with another snoozer of a stock. Uh, but I think you might be intrigued. Marathon Petroleum Corporation ticker MPC. I fell asleep on it for a few weeks. Didn't sell quick enough. It's down at its 200 day. Is it worth buying more? Love to hear your thoughts. MPC, and I told Damon this, MPC is one that was bought by Chevron. So I think that the, the transaction hasn't taken place yet. Uh, I don't know the details of the sale, but what I would do is I would go and I would look at what the sale is. Because if the sale is something like $200 per share, then you're golden. Just sit in there and wait because it's probably going to go through. And at some point, you'll get $200 a share. If for some reason, MPC is tied to the energy prices, which like, um, you know, Pioneer Natural was tied, you were going to get two shares of uh, Exxon for every share of, um, so it was tied to the Chevron price. I would tell you, this one, yeah, you fell asleep on. The second it was announced and, the, and this run-up continued up to 214, you fell asleep on it. Now, this is a good company. It's not a bad company whatsoever. Um, we can see it. I, I, don't, I don't think Seeking Alpha is going to tell us exactly what the price is. Um, we can look at some of the analysts telling us what, what it is. But the valuations is C. The growth is D-, minus. but that's all of energy. 
The buyback king of the energy sector continues to shine. That was from May 2nd. Um, you know, rising fuel, $59 billion. I mean, short interest at 2.7. This is going, you know, ranked 4 out of 22 on the energy sector, the oil and gas refining. I mean, you know, I, I don't have MPC. I don't know what your purchase price is. Would I stay in this one? I'd probably... You know, it's hard to sell when your RSI is at 27. It's hard to sell. But do you have uh, some some room on the downside? Absolutely. I mean, here's the weekly. Look, the the, the, the 200 days at 102. You know, your, your shelf right here at 150, that's probably where your downside is, where your support level is. If you look at where it traded sideways, uh, it, it's right here. Let's put a little a little line right through the middle of this. Because if you're looking at where it's traded sideways, that's where it's at, and that's 150. So in my mind, that's probably where you're going. Now, you've used the 50-day as support a couple of times on this weekly. So your hope is that, yes, you're going to use 50-day as support. Do I think you're getting back to 200? I think it depends on that purchase. So honestly, Damon, I would go back and look at that purchase. Um, let's see. This is from Cade from an email. What do you think of ARM? Does it have any potential for long-term buy and hold? And by the way, I love this email from Kate because it includes so many details. Uh, it has a fairly large long-term deal with Apple through 2040, ensuring its chip technology will be found in iPhones and MacBooks. They are also involved with other large companies like NVIDIA, Microsoft, Alphabet, TSM, Intel, to name a few. They receive recurring royalties through their partnerships representing 60% of the company's business. They announced $824 million in sales and $3.2 billion in revenue expected in the coming year. It may be uh, possible that the demand for AI chips will lead to lots of companies designing their own uh, AI processors and they'll use ARM's designs for a lot of those projects. That's 100% true. However... The stock appears very crazily valued, approximately 40 times sales, 80 times forward adjusted earnings, 140 times expected gap earnings. If they continue in the right direction, maybe its value will be justified. They will announce earnings on July 31st. Stock is currently near its 52-week high, wondering if I should get in now before earnings or wait to see if it breaks through the resistance. Would love to hear your thoughts. Fundamentals, you've got it down pat. I will tell you the uh, there was ironically a, a uh, analyst came out yesterday on Seeking Alpha and they said buy a complimentary investment investment to Nvidia and they think it's still got room to run. I don't think they name a price target, but this guy has 38 years of experience. He's probably around my age. But let's take a look at the chart real quick. Arm uh, Arm was an IPO. Uh, I didn't believe in the IPO, and then all of a sudden they announced earnings, and it gapped up, and we've just been continuing there. It kind of came back to normal levels. It still hasn't touched this gap. I mean, it touched a little bit here at you know uh, back in April, but it hasn't touched it totally. Now the algorithm had you in at 101. You're at 186. 186. It's only been out there for nine months. Seven positions. The algorithm makes you 230% versus 227%. I would argue that that's long enough to know that this four-hour algorithm probably works fairly well in this name. But but like you said, it's overvalued. Now, could it go higher? Yes. The MACD could absolutely go to 15 here because it has before. It's, it's at all-time highs. Your RSI, could it go higher? Absolutely. It was at 93 here. You're only at 83. So could it continue higher? Yes. What's the expectation on earnings? Let's kind of go over to earnings hub. Uh, uh, earningshub.com. Because we're going to look at ARM. And I want to see what the expectations are. Because if they're too high, in my mind, I think that's a little bit of a danger and a, and a warning sign where you might want to take some profits. So they reported 36 cents. They're expected 34 cents. Reported 928 million. Their revenue is expected at 908. Again, when you have this run up, all of that downside is expected in the in the holdings. If we go over here and we go to ARM, let's type in ARM. I think it's a, a buy on the quant. It was well, not covered yet. They don't they don't cover it. So let's see from Wall Street. It's uh, price target 121. I mean, that's hard to say to, to hold on to this through earnings 
when you've got a, a 121 price target. And again, I, I, I don't want to argue this because I think it's a, a really, really good stock. And I think your, your analysis of it is 100% correct. It's an IPO. It's nine months old. So we don't know what's going to happen with earnings. My suggestion, Cade, would be if you're not in this, um, I wouldn't get in. I wouldn't get in before earnings. If you are in this, I would probably set some type of trailing stop loss and I would probably put your absolute support at 170. And the reason I say 170 is no further reason than than right here. You can see we popped up to 177. 177 was uh, this candle's high, um, 177.31. And then you pulled back down. And then we got a, another band up. Your, your Bollinger Bands uh, contracted here, and we got another move back up. So I would probably put my support at about 177, 170, somewhere in that neighborhood to protect your profits. A- and I would probably do that going into earnings. I don't know what those earnings, again, we've only had three earnings from this company. All have been fairly good, and they've been catalysts for the stock. You can see this was a huge catalyst up. Then it came back to reality, and 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 then they realized, oh my God, this company's the for real. And that 130, 140 price, we should go up there, and it was immediately attracted there. If I were in this one, I would be having significant stop losses. And again, like you said, it's the valuation. And at some point in time, valuation matters. And and again, it hasn't mattered for Tesla. Uh, but we don't know. We don't have a long enough distance with ARM. Tesla was out. You know, they, I think they IPO'd in like 2014. So the valuation never mattered in that name. Absolutely never mattered. This one, we've been out for nine months. Don't have enough, uh, you know, knowledge into this one. And is the AI trade, uh, you know, old? I don't know. A- again, I wouldn't get out of this one right now. You've got strength in this one, but I would have a probably a trailing stop loss for like, say 5%. If it loses 5% in a day, I would probably get out because I think the downside probably would be further. But right now, those Bollinger Bands are opening up. I, I can't imagine that you're going to see this one, you know, pull back by 5%. Scans, uh, entries, big one. NVIDIA. We talked about it yesterday, and I think I even mentioned it yesterday, that we were going to get a buy in NVIDIA. It's up 2%. This one, we got out with, a, I think, a 40, 48%, 49% gain. You're back in at 128. You're trading at 131. Do you want to buy? Absolutely. Just buy it. Look at your MACD. Your MACD's low. Your RSI is back down at 62. When we take a look at the weekly, it's still stretched. But the valuation in this one still makes sense. Again, based on the forward projections of this company. If we if if for some reason this company doesn't beat and doesn't meet on their next earnings on let's see August 19th, you're going to see a 20% pullback. You'll see it come back down here to 100. Now, does that mean you don't buy at 130? No, because if they do beat and exceed, you're at 160, $160 price. So again, you know, the valuation matters. It, it shouldn't scare you away, but they do have to meet and beat for that crazy. Now, Netflix, we talked about this one being a $700 stock. It is a $700 stock. It's bumping up against that $700 range. This one got to 697 and pulled back. It's a $700 stock. It gets you in here. Again, the, the original was 549 The MACD reset, again, my algorithm is based on the MACD. It gets you back in. Just, just another th- one. Uh, we can talk about some of the, um, the 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 watch list, the daily stock pick watch list, which is included in TrendSpider, so you can scan against it. One of the scans, MHO, MI Homes, one nineteen sixteen. Am I getting into this one? I'm probably waiting until I see that that fifty day starts to turn around a little bit. This one has been a huge winner. We talked about back here how it's got this range. It has stayed in this range. Do you want to buy down here? I think that range probably supports buying down here. So take take a look at that one. On on. This was one that when it dipped under 30, you absolutely buy it. When it dipped uh, when it will got over 30, you absolutely sell it. I think 40 now moves to it. You know, the dollar amount is 40. It, it is an extremely expensive stock, don't get me wrong. I tried these shoes. They don't make a wide enough uh, wide enough shoe for me personally. They felt very comfortable though. I will tell you the bounce in these things are incredibly good. 
Um, and, and people love these shoes. I talked to several other people who have better feet than I do. Uh, and, and it's a good, it's a good, good stock. Uh, you know, you're counting on the growth again, consumers a little weak. Do you want to get into this one? Eh. MACD reset, super low RSI coming off a oversold territory of 26 gets you in at 37 with confirmation. So it's kind of an interesting one. If you want to take a trade, I think for a longer term, it might turn out to be good deck another shoe company. This is Hoka. And in fact, I'm looking, getting back into Hoka shoes. The last one, it got you out with a 0.24% loss, 954. You're starting, that, that nine day is starting to turn around. This one, the nine day was still going negative. I wouldn't have gotten into that one. But if you got in at 978, I think you'll be fine. I think you're coming back up here to 1,000. Again, they have earnings coming up. Is the consumer weak? Look at how far that MACD has moved down. Look at how far the RSI has reset. This one may be getting ready to go for another run. Again, if we are going, I argue, I think it's a little bit stretched. Am I looking to take some of these names that are all at all-time highs? I don't know. Royal Caribbean. 156.11, got you in. I think we're setting up a nice little trading range here. Bollinger Bands are contracting. Again, this one's not a bad one to to, to maybe get into. It's the, the valuation is not crazy. When you look at Royal Caribbean, this is an alpha pick, and I don't know if I, it's been long enough for me to say that, but it's an alpha pick, and it's a strong buy. And when you look at why it's, how long it's been a strong buy, it's been a strong buy since it was 86. You've doubled. You've doubled since it got to strong buy. It's at 161. When you go to Wall Street, what's the price target? The price target is 163. It's only 1% above. So do you want to buy it? Well, it makes some sense. Again, they're probably going to report and it's going to be huge. I mean, you know, you can't get on a freaking cruise. You know, they're going to report here July 24th. You know, we, we looked at Carnival. Carnival, they, could, they, they, they killed it. Royal Caribbean probably kills it. And that price target probably comes up. Uh, Fast and All, which reports this week. I think it's on Thursday or Friday. This one is on the watch list. And it gets a cross up. It's not on the watch list. It's actually part of the, I think, NASDAQ or the S&P. But this one has fallen back. Do you want to take that opportunity to buy this this falling knife? 50 days still moving negative. I would not buy into this one without knowing what the company does, what their financials are, and how it plays into their earnings. The last earnings were horrible because the stock just came down. That stock came down from 75 to 62. You had $62. So you want to make sure that you know the valuation of this company because 62 heading into the last earnings here back in January, you got your run up from 62 all the way to, uh, let's say 22% gain. The algorithm, uh, you know, again, it gets you into 37 positions over, uh, over 24 months. It doesn't do as well as buy and hold. This is just one that I think has lost you too much on some of these downswings. It's been a lot of fake outs. So I don't know if you want to play that one, but it's an interesting one. Uh, Leverage DTF, we had MVDL. We talked about how NVIDIA got you back in. NVDL is a two times levered uh, ETF on NVIDIA. I will tell anybody that wants it. If you buy NVDL, you better buy NV- NVDA as well. NVDA is the one that you hold. NVDL is the one that you trade. But it looks like, you know, again, the MACD set up nicely. NVDL at 75, you're already trading 78. And again, their earnings are coming up. So I think it's a good one. Some of the sectors, XLI, industrials. uh, This is a sector that had a a good run in the beginning of the year. It's pulled back a little bit. I mean, we've been trading a little bit sideways. But for, for this year so far, it had a great run. And you can see trading sideways. Is it getting ready to go up again? We had the death cross. The, the uh, 50 day crossed the 200. That blue line crossed the 200. So I don't know if you want to get into it. We talked about Berkshire. We talked about uh, XLB, which is the material sector. This one, this is where the hedge funds are all going into. We had the death cross. I don't know if it's good. I mean, you know, I don't know the material sector, but I would say that, you know, it's not bad. The MACD set up down here at uh, 88. And the last time you got in at 88, you had a nice 2%, 3% run. Material sector. The algorithm on this one makes you 54%. So I would believe it. The nine days moving positive. So maybe you got some upside in this one because the MACD set up the uh you know the 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 hedge funds are getting into this one. 
Again, if you want any of the uh, the, the products here, uh, four-hour algorithm, 65-minute algorithm, any of the scanners, any of the watch list, anything, it's all in TrendSpider. Uh, then you can get Seeking Alpha 20% off, free seven-day trial. If you like what you saw with the, the quant and how it rates uh, stocks and you don't know fundamentals really well, I can tell you, it makes you better at fundamentals. And Alpha Picks, if you just want some stocks, we talked about how it got you out of, uh, which one, BRX? Uh, yeah, BXC, sorry, BXC is the one that got a 22% gain over two years. That's a great gain over two years. You know, it, it didn't time it perfectly. You probably could have traded it much better. But again, you can use it as ideas. That's the third one here. And if you want Weeble, Weeble's the best desktop. You know, it's got a great desktop. So if you don't get TrendSpider, make sure you have some type of desktop software that trades stocks and, and can show you charts. Whether it's Active Trader Pro from Fidelity, Thinkorswim from uh, TD Ameritrade, whether it's Weeble, Weeble has a great desktop software. I use it for the, the mobile app. I like Weeble's mobile app and their actual charts in the mobile Really good to trade on five minutes, to be honest with you. You put some moving averages in there, you can trade confirmation all day on a Weeble. So you you could be out hiking and trade, you know, a Zap, uh, you know, one of those crazy ones. But I'll be back tomorrow. Remember, uh, follow me on Twitter. I'm going to be on Spaces as well. I think tomorrow's 2 p.m. one. It's going to be the Savvy Trader guy. So it's a little bit more interesting. Okay. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later. See you, the trading bell, my heart starts to pound. Daily stock day trading podcast in my ears, guiding me through my hopes and fears. Tune in daily, don't miss a single show. Sign up for the newsletter, let us help you grow. Taking risks, making moves, seeking success. Together we'll conquer, no room for any less. Every morning I wake up to the sound of the trading bell. My heart starts to pound. Daily stock day trading podcast. My hopes and fears